Hey folks, so just a couple of hours after I release this video, I'll be on my first flight on the way to France for DreamHack Tour. And usually I always do a vlog before I go into an event. And I've also lately been doing monthly update vlogs on the YouTube channel. So I thought I would just combine both of those things into one video. Let's talk a little bit about what's been going on and what's coming up, so to speak, or at least as much as I can talk about. So obviously I've just gotten back from DreamHack Austin and I'm quickly on my way to my next DreamHack event. And just to kind of do a little bit of a recap for DreamHack Austin from just my perspective and mostly personal stuff, not really match results or things of that nature. I had a shit ton of fun working at DreamHack Austin. It's always great to get to meet new people as well as catch up with people from the community that maybe you don't get to see that often. It's almost like a family reunion in that regard. And I talk about that quite a lot because that is kind of what it is. I mean, you interact with these people online all the time. And, you know, for me, who, who doesn't go to that many events, it's really cool to get to run across folks at events like this one, which I did. You know, and of course, meeting new people along the way. So, for example, I got to meet Machine at this event, which is someone who I've always respected his work a lot. He's obviously a fantastic host and commentator in CSGO, but I've just never met him in person before. And so it was really cool to get to meet him at this event. It was a shit ton of fun to hang out with. Really funny guy, really nice guy. And he also gave me a lot of critique and feedback that I can use going forward. So really appreciate that as well. It's always great to be able to get um, critique from people who work in your industry and who are very talented at what they do. And if they can pass on some, some information, I really appreciate that support. It really can help me further my own skills, so to speak. And so, yeah, definitely cool stuff. Also, I met uh, Talking Fanatic, who is a YouTube creator at the event. We, we hit it off a couple of times and hung out. Really cool dude. He's got a lot of cool content on the web, so definitely check him out. And that's about it as far as new people goes, I guess. I met a lot of people I had met in the past, but it had been quite some time since I've seen them. You know, for instance, someone like Days. I hadn't seen him since ESCA lands, I don't think, in person. And then Blue, someone I only met once at Leipzig. And, and again, don't really get to run to him very often, so obviously cool to catch up with those guys. And then obviously cool to catch up with Vendetta because he's someone I worked with at ECS last year, someone I talked to online a good bit, someone else I get feedback from. Uh, so really cool dude, really good at what he does, and I'm glad I was able to run to him again. And then obviously Adren, folks will know that me and him are pretty good friends. We play games together on his stream sometimes. We, we've done some content together, like we did the preview for, for Austin on his YouTube channel. We've done some other stuff. So we're pretty close friends. But again, it's been about a year or so since I had seen him in person. So really cool to catch up with him again. And then obviously really cool to catch up with Launders and work with him because I had never worked with him before uh, at a serious tournament. You know, we had done some casual stuff like TwitchCon and maybe we did do some online regular season stuff for Sivo way back in the day, but still we never actually done a LAN tournament together. And so it was definitely a lot of fun working with him. He's a really cool dude. He's hilarious. He's so easy to work with. He's, he's a blast to hang out with as well. Uh, we, we're pretty good friends. You know, we've met at other like events like Northern Arena and Sivo stuff in the past. So really cool to catch up with him and kind of see what he's been up to, obviously, with Yahoo and all the YouTube content he's doing over there, which is really fantastic stuff. Every video he's put out thus far has been a banger, in my opinion, and I've had a lot of fun watching his content and then catching up with him at this event was also really cool. Also met a lot of people just out in the community that just happened to be there, like uh, Ryu was there, the owner of Selfless, he was there hanging out, Stunna was there, you know, a guy who works with Esports Arena now, but obviously formerly did, you know, CSGO management and team management for Cloud9 and as well as Complexity, we kind of followed that team between those two organizations. So people will know him. He does really cool content with Esports Arena. He did that Moses documentary. He does uh, the guy, what is it called? Put Up or Shut Up show like the debate show with everyone. So yeah, he's doing a lot of cool stuff. It was cool to catch up with him. And it was also cool, there was a several other people, so if I forgot to mention them, sorry, but there was a lot of people I ran into, whether it be players or whether it be members of the community. And so it was really a whole lot of fun, is really the bottom line. And I'm glad I went. And uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much everything that came out of it on my end was positive, to be quite honest. And I know there was some negative feedback that came out of this event as well. And so I will address that just really quickly. Uh, first off, I will say that, yes, I admit fully that the one map that that thread that really got high up there on Reddit came out, which was a new game that went into triple overtime between G2 and Gambit. I definitely did make some huge mistakes during that map. There's no doubt about it. You know, it was kind of a marathon day. We had already done one semifinal best of three where two of the maps had gone like almost all 30 rounds and it was really long and my voice was going out. And when you're in a triple overtime like that, you know, it's, it's intense. Like the crowd's really amped, you know, the game's really 
intense. Like you feel like you go either way at that point. It's obviously an important match is a semifinal. You know, it's a spot for the grand finals and one map advantage in the series. And also, you know, in that point, it feels like every little thing matters. And so everything feels exciting. And so I kind of lost my way with my pacing, I guess is the first thing to say is I kind of, you know, got up to too high of a level and I stayed there and some of it was because I was afraid to vary my voice too much because I thought my voice would crack if I did because my voice was going out so I kind of tried to just maintain a medium level never really went too high never really dropped down too low and, and, and like I said when it got all intense and in the heat of the moment I just kind of got wrapped up in it and so some of the chemistry kind of broke down as well with Launders which is on me um, I thought he did a fantastic job throughout the event. He did everything he was supposed to do. I, I definitely slipped up in this map, though. And I also said some stupid shit that just didn't make any sense, like that whole match points thing. It's one of those things where as soon as it comes out your mouth, you know you fucked up. Like, you're just like, what the fuck did I just say? That makes no sense at all. It's completely inaccurate. This doesn't make any sense. Why would I say that? And it's just because, you know, the mind's kind of melted, you know? Like, I wasn't feeling well. Maybe you can kind of tell I'm under the weather. I actually had to go to the doctor yesterday to get some, some meds for, for the trip for tours and the voice break. It, it, there's a lot of stuff going on, and I don't want to make any excuses. I messed up, and I'll own up to it. I made some dumb comments, I'm, I, 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 and that affected the quality of the broadcast in some regard. But it's one of those things where there's not much I could do about it. I just had to keep trudging forward. I had to own that mistake. It's not like I can hit the rewind button and fix it. Then I had to just try to do better later. And I thought that the next two maps, which was our last two maps of the event, actually went pretty well. Like the train, or excuse me, yeah, I think it was train and cobblestone that came after that. I thought those games went a lot better. I thought the flow got back to a good level. I thought I was pacing a bit better. We were definitely having better chemistry. We were passing back and forth better. So I thought that we instantly recognized it. Or I should say I instantly recognized my mistake and was able to fix it. By that point, it was almost too late. Right, that thread had already spot out of control, and it was it's unfair. Community can be very unforgiving in that regard, and some of it some of it does feel like a lot of that came from just people who already disliked me from all the Smith drama six months ago, which kind of sucks because I'm pretty much on good terms with all the players right now. Like every player I spoke to at the event was totally fine with me, including some of the people from G2. Uh, like I spoke with Apex a little bit, I spoke with MBK a little bit. Um, I've emailed back and forth with Smiths before, so I mean most of the players have gotten over, but it seems like a lot of the community hasn't, and there's not much I can do about it. You you know, I already did what I could to apologize and to try to make men's and to try to just, you know, press on and improve and, and just focus on getting back to my roots and focus on being more research driven and, and just more what I was known for is trying to be as knowledgeable as possible and try to bring insightful, concise information to you in the broadcast and to just really focus on that rather than trying to be something that I'm not, which is, is being like this kind of like edgy kind of thing. I, I let feedback of me being too boring get to my head and I tried to force something that I'm not before. And so now I'm just getting back to what I'm good at and finding other ways to maybe bring humor and entertainment to the broadcast. I'm still kind of experimenting with that. I'm still trying to kind of find my identity. Like I already know what my roots are as far as, you know, analysis, but trying to find other things to make the broadcast more entertaining is certainly something I'm still experimenting with and trying to sort out. And that's really all I'm going to say about it. I thought that, um, you know, Loners and I did pretty well the first two days. Like, we didn't really get any negative feedback the first two days of the event. And we didn't get any bad feedback the previous semifinal. It was just that one map of that one semifinal that seemed to catch a lot of flack. And, yeah, I made a mistake, but... It is what it is. Not much I can do about it. It's also important to note that I was in a role that I'm not very comfortable with. You know, I was doing a lot of play-by-play -play commentary there because obviously Launders is a color commentator and an analyst. Doesn't really have any experience doing play-by-play. -play. And from talking with him, it's just not something he's very comfortable doing regularly. He'll do it every now and then when he's in the when, when something's really you know crazy and he's really you know pumped up about it. He definitely can do play-by-play, -play, but he's more known for for color and analysis. And so since I do have some background in play-by-play, -play, since I used to do it a long time ago, I haven't done it offline in probably two to three years and don't really do it online either. Well, my focus for the last few years has been color commentary analysis. So a lot of our broadcasts were very color heavy, um, you know, particularly beginning and mid round. I would do a little bit of color in the very beginning of the round. He would do a lot of color in the middle of the round. I'd do some play by play the end of the round. And then we'd have like an end round beginning round discussion like in that freeze time process. So and then we did like a lot of pre game analysis as well when the desk would pass it to us before the map actually went live. So we tried to make it pretty analysis heavy because we just wanted to both play to our strengths but obviously there's moments that call for play-by-play -play commentary and so I I did the bulk of that while Honors did some of it and yeah it's just not one of my strong suits but I did the best with it that I could I thought for the most part it went okay but yeah there's definitely some mistakes particularly that new game and so yeah that pretty much does it when I go over the DreamHack Tour, which is where I'm headed now, I'll be paired up with Metis, which will be great because he's obviously a fantastic play-by-play -play commentator. 
and I will be able to get back to my role of doing color commentary, something that I'm more comfortable with. And so I think that it should go a lot smoother. Our chemistry is pretty good. We've worked together at DreamHack Leipzig. We've worked together for DreamHack qualifiers online. We've done some other online stuff together. We did some offline stuff together last year with Gfinity and Sivo. So, you know, we definitely had some chemistry there. We have experience working together. We're also really good friends. We talk almost every day. We're doing content together, like the Digital Discourse podcast, which you can check out on his channel, which I think the second pilot of that should be coming out either right before or right after I release this vlog. So definitely go check that out over on Metis' YouTube channel. I'm sure you can find it. I'll maybe link it in the description below. So yeah, when we're trying to do it together, basically, that, that's the deal. Like we're trying to, you know, see if we can, you know, make something where we have a consistent pairing so we can work on developing even deeper chemistry and, 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 and even higher quality broadcast, right? We definitely both get to play our strengths and, and, and us doing. We both get to play the roles that we want to play. And I think we work together really well. And so hopefully we'll be able to do one more in the future. This will be our second offline event together this year, you know, filing off the back of DreamHack Leipzig. And like I said, one last year and some online stuff. We may have some more online stuff coming up as well. And maybe some more stuff in the future that we just got to hope for the best, right? Just try to do our best, work hard, and see what happens. It'd be great to continue to do DreamHack events together if possible. I know that Metis has a really good relationship with DreamHack. You know, I'm just starting to really work with them. And so it's kind of don't really know exactly how they feel just yet. But yeah, we'll see what happens. It'd be cool to work more DreamHack events together and just whatever else we can get into together. Um, obviously, there's always a chance that I might do analyst desk work again in the future as well, I suppose. But right now, my focus is trying to see if we can make this duo work. It's obviously high, highly reliant upon whether or not we can get hired together on a consistent basis, which isn't always easy to guarantee that, especially since we live in you know two different continents, two different countries that are fairly far apart. And so with travel costs and other complications it can be difficult to make that happen but you know we'll see what happens and uh, at least we have this dream hack tour event together and i'm absolutely looking forward to it it's gonna be great to uh, work together there again it'll be great catching up with some people i haven't seen in a while like Riss, for example i met him for the first time in leipzig really cool dude talk to him online a good bit glad i'm gonna get to see him i'll meet harry for the first time he's gonna be casting with ricks uh and then yeah i'll, I'll also get to meet natu for the first time in person i don't think i've ever met him in person before obviously very familiar with him so it'll be cool to meet him and catch up with paula and also i don't think i've ever met james duffield either in person so i get to meet some new people again which is always fun i'll get to catch up with some old faces as well i'll get to go to a new country i've never been to before not sure how much i'll get to explore it because i'll obviously be working most of the time but yeah it'll be cool to be in a new place and to you know get to experience new things get to continue to work with dreamhack get to continue to try to focus on getting consistent work and just trying to keep improving and keep doing my thing. And that's really kind of the most important stuff to come out of it. Now, when I get back from DreamHack Tour, actually, as soon as I get back, I have to make another trip somewhere to do some things uh, that I can't really talk about. It's not really CS related anyway, just kind of life related that I have to do. And then after that, when I get home from that thing, uh, I think I will be doing the Subaru Invitational. It's not 100% confirmed, but I probably will be working with that. You've probably already heard about the Subaru Invitational. I know the team announcement just got released within the past couple of days of me releasing this. So that may be an event that you'll see me working with. It's an online tournament, $20,000. Pretty much all the top teams competing in the Americas region, like you know the NA side of EPL, for instance. Pretty much all those top teams are going to be competing in the Subaru Invitational. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of cool stuff. It's going to be similar to maybe like one of those I buy power invitational type tournaments, but with a little bit more prize money and definitely a stronger team lineup even. So this should be even better than the spring invitational just maybe a couple of months ago that also got a pretty good response. And, uh, hopefully maybe I'll even be casting with Metis for a little bit of the Subaru invitational, not hundred percent sure on that. Again, things are still trying to be sorted out with scheduling and logistics and all that stuff behind the scenes. But should should see me doing a little bit of that at least and maybe Metis doing a little bit with me as well just depends not really sure nothing's been announced yet i don't know when things are going to be announced and may get announced while i'm in france so i just thought i would mention it in this vlog that that's the thing and then there's maybe some more stuff coming up down the road as well as far as like online stuff or offline stuff goes again it's kind of all up in the air right now nothing confirmed nothing i can talk about but i'm definitely you know trying my best to chase down opportunities uh, either together with Metis or just whatever and see if we can't, you know, really make a good go of it. And, and obviously me still trying to make a good go of trying to make esports a full time thing for me. Um, it, it's kind of been a full time thing for me for a while now in the sense that I'm not really getting income from anything else. Uh, because it's been hard to find part-time jobs that will be flexible in scheduling and allow me to work for them, but also have the freedom to go to events and, and hunt down esports opportunities. I'm still trying to f sort that out, though, as I could certainly use something consistent. But 
yeah, that, that's pretty much it as far as what I've been up to lately, what's coming up next. As far as content goes on YouTube, obviously I've been really busy, so I haven't been able to get out many like behind the play episodes or many videos like this one where I discuss esports topics, particularly CSGO topics. But hopefully I'll get back to that when things kind of slow down and I get home from France and I have a little bit of time. I'll try to, you know, maybe crank out a couple of behind the play episodes, something like that. But it's also been hard with YouTube content just because, you know, there's been a lot of stuff with social media that's been kind of really clamping down on it. But again, I'm going to try my best to do that. Obviously, the, the Digital Discourse podcast I'm doing with Metis will continue on. Again, the second pot should be coming out soon before or after this video. I'm not sure when it will come out. And then we'll continue to try to roll with that podcast between the two of us. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll try to get with content as much as I can. But it's just been real busy lately. And that's pretty much it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you'll tune in to DreamHack Tour. And uh, yeah, keep a lookout for more stuff in the future. Just follow subscribe for more content. Thanks so much.